everybody, something a little bit different today. We're in Hanoi, I'm taking a little bit of a break from driving before I head south and I thought it's a perfect opportunity to share with you some of the delicious foods, the best eats in Hanoi because I've been here for a week getting happily fat and I'm going to share with you some of the best food in Hanoi with you today. I'm also joined by Gary, aka the roaming cook, aka brother from another mother. And we're going to be showing you the best eats in Hanoi. Enjoy this video. So you've come to Hanoi and the first thing you're going to eat is pho, right? Let's be honest. We've gone for this, what is this, meatball? Yeah, meatball. And it comes with a pair of scissors. <laughs> okay. Is that right? Is that what that's for? Are the locals looking at me like I'm a weirdo behind me? They've been looking at us like we're weirdos since we got here, so I don't right. know if that's the scissors or just... Because I obviously, I'll just bite I'll into just bite it. That, I'll just really? bite into it, yeah. I'm not getting my hair cut, am I? Mmm, there's an egg yolk inside. Oh, no way. Mmm. Wow. It's almost like a Vietnamese a scotch egg <laughs> without the batter on the outside. That tastes amazing. And then they've got the delicious noodles, some spring onions, and then if you want, which I will do a little bit, is just add a little bit of spiciness in there. Not too much. It's complimentary bread here as well, by the way. Mmm. If you come into Hanoi for pho, come here. There's a bunch of places you can choose from, but look for the well-built bloke on the electric skateboard thing. And there's a great atmosphere here, and this is absolutely delicious, man. And look at the state of yours. <laughs> That's gonna be... I don't know how you're gonna eat that, but good luck. This area of the Hanoi Old Quarter is littered with pho outlets, and each one has its own charm and character. We only chose this one because of the Don who owns it driving around on his electric skateboard delivering delicious bowls of pho to your table. You'll be able to see over on Gary's channel by the way all of the other dishes that we tried during this few days eating and exploring Hanoi. Another quick thing we're going to quickly show you while we're in the pho district. We're going to try a dish that is actually invented in, on this crossroads and it's called pho kuan and it's beef meat. The similar meat, or the same meat from the pho noodle soup itself but this time in rice paper rolls. Alright, so this is pho guan. It's pho, a bowl of pho, but in the form of a salad wrap. Here we go. Pho guan. It's not packed full of mental flavour, but it'll do. It'll, it's a nice alternative to someone who doesn't want to have a bowl of pho. I'm not sure I would describe it as a pho in a wrap. The dipping sauce is really nice. It's kind of really, really, really into these calamansi limes. Very easy to eat. Nothing, nothing crazy in here. I could imagine sitting here with a couple of uh, couple of beers, ordering a couple of platefuls of these. It'll do the job. Next up is a very special place here in downtown Hanoi. But first, let's take a quick walk around through the madness that is downtown Hanoi. If we have any Anthony Bourdain fans in the house, by the way, you are gonna enjoy this one. Right then, next up, presidential boon cha. Boon cha is one of the most popular dishes in the north. I've had it a few times on our road trip, but this is the special one. This is where I come quite often. I've been here three times. I love it so much. I brought Gary here. If it's good enough for Barack Obama and Anthony Bourdain, then it's good enough for me and it's definitely good enough for Gary. Okay, so the food has arrived. Boon cha. Boon cha. Boon cha. You get a lot of meat here, guys. This is somewhere that you don't want to come for a light bite. You're going to be stuffed after you've eaten all this. Look how much meat you get. It's ridiculous. At the bottom, you have these big giant pork patties. 
this is like a burger that you would make on a barbecue and it's cooked to perfection and then you also have these slightly thinner strips of charred pork almost like bacon uh, in its in its smell and in its texture the broth is obviously absolutely delicious nice and oily a little bit sweet so you can you can kind of counter the sweetness with a bit of pepper and a nice helpful drizzle of this freshly cut chili. What, what kind of chilies are these again? Uh, they'd be like bird's eye chilies. They're bird's just eye. Bird's eye fish fingers. This is the thing about Boonchar, is the rice noodles are served on the side. And look how jiggly they are. Looks like silicone, doesn't it? <laughs> like I said, there's so much noodles here, so much meat. You're going to be absolutely stuffed if you come here. And it's 120,000 Vietnamese dong for the Boonchar the fried seafood parcel, they call this a spring roll, but it's more like a parcel. It's absolutely massive. There's just so much going on in there. There's the, there's the heat from the fresh chili, the charriness from the meat, the sweetness from the broth, the crunchiness from the vegetables. You get that sort of tartness from those little, that sort of tart sourness from those little, mm. oh, they are star apples, I think they are. I don't know what they are, mate, but. It helps you. It makes you trick you. It tricks your brain into thinking you're eating something healthy. Yeah. <laughs> You've got all this fatty pork meat. Like barbecue to perfection. So yeah, I think it's fair to say that Gary and I are massive bun cha fans. <laughs> and Gary actually took me out to eat a few more bun chas for a video over on his channel. I should say at this point that this video was filmed over a few days. There's no way we could eat all this food, guys, in one day. It's a ridiculous amount of food we've eaten. But even after we ate that bowl of bun cha, you'd think Gary was full, but no. <laughs> Paddy, I'm going to give you that. Yes, mate, what? That was probably the best place you've ever taken me for food. It was good. What I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking I didn't get enough grilled pork, right? <laughs> of course you so didn't. So I know this lovely little bun me with grilled pork, the same pretty much grilled pork we just got in there, little skewers of grilled pork, grilled over a little coal fire and stuffed into a crispy baguette. Right then. Right, Paddy's gonna, Paddy's gonna get this ready fresh, yeah? Two sticks of pork and then you use the bread and pull it off the stick. Look at that. Let me have a little look at that. Look at that one, eh? No, no greens, no coriander, just meat and bread. So yeah, as I bit into that delicious baguette full of spicy sauce and grilled pork, a lot of memories were rushing through my mind. I had one of those food memory things popped to my head. Go on. I don't like to talk, can't you? Yeah, yeah. You can wait. You see, Gary's really good at explaining what the dish is, what ingredients are put in it, and the history behind it. But for me, food always invokes a memory. And since his mic was playing up, I'll share with you my memory. It can sound a bit of an insult in a way, but I promise you it's not. To me, this tasted, the way that the bread was quite chewy, the way that the meat was cooked and the spicy sauce, the way it was made, it just reminded me, I don't know if you guys ever have drunken doner kebabs where you guys come from, but back home in England, when you've had a few beers and you're having a doner kebab on the way home, this spicy sauce, this chewy doughy bread and the delicious pork meat just took me back home. And even though that sounds like a bit of an insult, I promise you it's not. I was like, I feel bad for saying it tastes chewy and it reminds me of having a drunken kebab at 3 o'clock in the morning, but to me, that's, that's the, the biggest compliment you can give. Ultimate compliment. <laughs> How can you come to Vietnam and not get banh mi? And here in the old quarter in Hanoi, there's my favorite banh mi place in the whole of the north of Vietnam. I'm ashamed to say I've probably had about 20 of these because I just love them so much. Sometimes I get two because they're not too big, you know? So let me just obviously show you what this is. It's obviously a French baguette. Reminiscence from the French colonization that we talked about when we were in Sapa. And inside, you've got Vietnamese ingredients. 
So I've gone for the bun meat chow, which is an egg pan. So it's like the closest sort of Asian street food dish that you can get to an English fry up. So if you're feeling a little bit worse for wear in the morning, you've had a couple of sherbets last night on Beer Street. Um, this is the one to go for. So it comes with three soft as a pillow, cloud like baguettes. And then we've got a runny egg, sunny side up egg. We've got some pork pate and a lot of it. Uh, some barbecue like char siu red pork. Mm. That is so good. That's yeah. so, so good. It's so light. Unbelievably crispy. They're freshly baked over the road. The sauce is delicious. Coming in like this thick sort of corn starchy gravy. Now, this has always been my go-to for baguettes in Saigon, mainly because they don't put mayonnaise in the baguette, so I don't know how to say no mayonnaise in Vietnamese. So. in central downtown Hanoi there's no 7-elevens okay so you can't just nip in and get yourself a nice chocolate fix so if you've got a sweet tooth like me this is where you need to come it's called Little Bowl and it does traditional Vietnamese style desserts I've never tried one actually I've walked past it every day and thought that looks interesting so let's go together and let's try Vietnamese dessert in Little Bowl Isn't that pretty as a picture? That is beautiful. So here you've got, what's that, the caramel slice? And then, these are tapioca balls, maybe? We're not quite sure, we're not dessert experts. Gary doesn't like sweet food, that's why we're gonna share this. I know what that is, that's ice cream with chocolate sauce. <laughs> you know what, this is perfect on a sweaty, sweaty afternoon in the old town. You're gonna absolutely love this. Am I? Those green balls are sour like apple. And then it's not overly sweet. It's really, really good. That is absolutely off the chain. You're right, the little green balls, you think they're gonna be like, super sweet. They're actually really, really sour. They're like a little sour fruit, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I would say, this is a great shout out buddy in this place. I would say like, if I had to eat like a dessert, that'd be my favorite dessert actually. Right here, next to Ban Mi 25, right next to the lake, in the middle of the old town, right next to a little old Vietnamese fellow having a cigarette. And as usual, we're sat on the little plastic chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Loving life. You can see how alive a Hanoi old town is. And we ate a lot more actually over at Gary's channel because Gary flew over here to make a lot of content in Hanoi and I've been helping him and eating a little bit of it with, with him as well. So if you want to experience more about Hanoi and its food and just awesome food videos in general, then head over to Gary the Roman Cook. I think this is our eighth or ninth, ninth video three. we've made together. Number 10 is gonna be really special. Second country. Yes. Where are we gonna eat next? I hope you found that video quite useful. I've loved eating all the food here. And it's been really nice to have a friend come over and yeah. hang out. It's been wonderful, mate. Cool. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we get back on Super Dreamy and we start heading south to the Ho Chi Minh Trail, central Vietnam, and more adventures to come. Peace. Oops.